asked Dan Schneider. This is another edition of the Ask Dan Schneider series, and I recently got a question from a young woman fan, Rita of Cosmoetica. Uh, she asked what my overall opinion on sci-fi and fantasy is, and uh, since there are certain limits in genre writing regarding the quality of the writing, do I think that these limits can be transcended? So that's a, a three-part question. Um, uh, since uh, the the reader, uh, Laura Woods, uh, also mentions uh, the Foundation series and Alien in her uh, longer question, um, my overall opinion, and that's the first of the three parts, is uh, that it's like any other genre. I am not a big fan of sci-fi and fantasy. Uh, I'm not someone who hates it either. Uh, I did uh, recently... Uh, a Dan Schneider video interview on comic books. I've actually done two uh, devoted to comic books, and I'm not big on comic books either. Um, comic books are generally are about superheroes. Superheroes are generally in the sci-fi field. And, you know, I think there can be great uh, uh, sci-fi works. The Foundation trilogy, the original one by Asimov, I think qualifies. It has a big enough scope. Uh, it, uh, you, it employs a sort of faraway look at uh, humanity. I mean, it's certainly outdated technically, 70 plus years since its uh, creation. But uh, it's a good uh, example of a great work of fiction that I think does transcend its genre by the quality. And I think that's the thing that, uh, in terms of transcending a, a genre, anything has to do it. it. It has to reach a certain level of quality. Most sci-fi cannot. A movie like Alien, I think, does. Terminator 2 does. I think arguably Aliens and Terminator, the original Terminator movie, do. Um, uh, uh, Forbidden Planet is probably a good example, probably the best example of 1950s sci-fi films that do. Obviously, 2001, uh, A Space Odyssey, Solaris, the original Russian film, are both great examples of science fiction uh, in film. Uh, other than the Foundation trilogy... Uh, one could make some arguments for some Arthur C. Clarke books. Um, I reviewed a few of them. The names slipped my mind. Uh, I do these Ask Dan Schneiders uh, extemporaneously. I'm not uh, looking at anything. Um, I am someone who has read, uh, you know, a moderate amount of science fiction. Most science fiction is very mechanistic. For example, uh, a writer like Philip K. Dick, if you look at his writing, it's very typical of any genre writing, whether it's romance, whether it be crime, spy, uh, noir, thrillers, that kind of thing. Someone like Philip K. Dick or Harlan Ellison, for example, they write uh, stories that are plot-driven, that are based upon an idea. The characters are utterly cardboard, they're utterly wooden, so that you don't have any end to the story. A typical Philip K. Dick uh, story generally plays out better in film because the film expands upon what Dick wrote, mostly short stories, and takes an initial idea that Dick would uh, base the story on. Dick would have cardboard characters. They go through trite uh, plot machinations. Uh, you always sort of saw the end coming, and it wasn't, the endings were usually a great letdown from the premise. Uh, in the film versions, uh, something like, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, what was the one? Uh, Total Recall, I believe, was a Philip K. Dick uh, film with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the original one. I never saw the remake with uh, Colin Farrell. Uh, Minority Report was a very good film up until the final ending, but both of the stories they were based on were mediocre. I mean, Philip K. Dick was simply not a good writer, and it was because he he was thinking of the idea. So when you know people call him a visionary writer, it's kind of a joke. Um, a Harlan Ellison is the same way. Someone like a Robert Heinlein, and I, I read uh, His Stranger in a Strange Land and a couple of other of his books and his short stories, was certainly a better writer. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke, Ray Bradbury at his best. Uh, the Martian Chronicles is an excellent book, uh, arguably a great book. It's a series of short stories. 
somewhat interlocked. It's not really a novel per se. Um, off the top of my head, uh, they come to mind. Then there's people like Samuel Delaney, who, who wrote uh, a number of longer books, some, uh, I guess you call seminal cyberpunk, but mostly it's just the uh, a uh, very soft core pornography, uh, mostly homosexual pornography. And this is what happens with a lot of uh, genre, and especially sci-fi, is people get their own little axis to grind. They want to perpetuate or propound this, that, or the other thing. And the science fiction gets lost. Um, and the same is true. I, I've, been, I've been working myself, for example, on a, a cowboy, a Western novel, and you know, aside from the bigger names like a Zane Gray or a Bret Hart or uh, that lot, uh, there is very little uh, that's great in Western writing. I did uh, a Dan Schneider video interview on Elma Kelton, one of the better contemporary uh, Western writers. But uh, again, like sci-fi, like fantasy, they tend to be mediocre. Of the two, I'll take sci-fi because at least the best sci-fi uh, grounds itself in the reality of science uh, and then goes beyond. Fantasy, like Lord of the Rings, boring, 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 boring. Uh, the C.S. Lewis Narnia novels, I think, are actually better than the Lord of the Rings or the Tolkien. The Hobbit is one of the dullest books ever written. I remember reading it when I was a teenager. It, it, it's it, Not only was it dull, but it's so derivative of uh, a lot of King Arthur, Thomas Mallory tales, that for me, someone who is a broader reader, I didn't come to it looking at it, oh, this is some grand epic. I just lo looked at it as sort of a hollow ripoff. But that's me. But even if I didn't have that background, it's it's generally not particularly interesting. Um, later fantasy stuff, I've seen some clips of, uh, uh, what's the big one, uh, Game of Thrones that's uh, on cable TV. I don't have cable myself, but I've seen it. Again, ho-hum, Lord of the Rings, rip-off, who cares? Uh, I'm one of the few people that would argue that the second Star Wars trilogy is actually better than the first Star Wars trilogy, but it's not because the second trilogy uh, is particularly good. It's mediocre, but the first trilogy is so bad. It's so childish, so silly. And, uh, you know, George, uh, what's his name, the, who did the Star Wars, George Lucas, uh, he did his first film, THX 1138. That's a, a near great science fiction film. It has a very European feel to it. It's intelligent. It propounds a dystopian society and uh, a guy getting away from it. it. It's a better film than, say, something like Logan's Run. But then he just sold out. And this often happens in science fiction. It ha often happens in genre. Uh, people sell out. Uh, again, then getting back to the limits in genre writing, specifically in sci-fi writing, you basically have to focus on the characters. There is no story if you don't have character. Plot is character, or rather, character is plot, I should say. Uh, if you don't have a good character, who gives a damn what the plot is? You know, you can have good uh, surface-level plot-driven stuff. I grew up watching Ray Harryhausen science fiction films, the claymation stop animation, uh, Jason and the Argonauts and that kind of thing. I was thinking of that recently because uh, this coming weekend I'm going to do a show on film criticism. Um, but, you know, that's, it is what it is.